I mean, the cheek to, to actually manipulate me from that point of view, I think I would have to get out of that contract. <laughs> As ever. In 1995 alone, Wet 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 have had four top ten singles, a number one album, and performed to more than half a million people worldwide. Well, tonight they're back in London for the second of three dates as they wrap up their world tour. And our entertainment correspondent, Ken Andrew, joins them now live on stage at Wembley. Ken. Where the official weather forecast, Karen, is absolutely blown a snowstorm outside, but we can hot, hot, hot it up with Wet Wet Wet. Who wrote this script? Gentlemen, yes. welcome oh, to After yes. Five. Oh, thank you for having us, After Five. <laughs> quite literally. Now, you're coming to the end of what has been a mammoth tour. Let's look at the places you've been to. Europe, really? Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Southeast Asia. If I went to those places mm. on holiday, I'd be exhausted. How do you manage to keep going? I think the... Uh, it is very much exhausting, but being on the road, and at least each night you've got a, a gig and a fresh audience, so I think that's the inspiration. For those two hours, it makes the rest of the day all worthwhile. You know, Admittedly, it's very boring and very tedious playing hotel room, but once you get into a hall and the song starts starts running and you get a vibe, then that makes it all, that's, that's what keeps you going from day to day. So what do you do when you're actually not performing on stage every day, Marty? I mean, do you see much of the towns you go to? Well, I mean, we try, you know, and take as much time off as possible, but um, sometimes it's, we're usually also promoting the record in the, in the country at the time, so it's quite mm. hard. But we try to go and visit museums and uh, <laughs> such like, you know, and the, and the occasional bar for the occasional glass of sherry. Mm. Now you're in I the. I once stayed up to twelve o'clock one night. <laughs> Did you really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Reading a newspaper quietly. Um, yes, well, obviously <laughs> whittling away the hours, listening to non-stop reggae and pop music. Now you're coming up to the end of the tour, as I say. You're going back to Glasgow, your hometown. I mean, what sort of welcome do you normally get when you go back there? Uh, many people ask us whether audiences change, whether a homegrown audience is is more receptive. To be honest, an audience is an audience with wet, wet, wet. Our music is rather emotional. Uh, I think that's the way the way the, uh, the language we speak musically. And so we can go on stage in Australia or wherever, including Glasgow, and it's very much a similar thing. People come along from all over the world to have a good time, and that's what our music hopefully delivers uh, on, on, on the best nights. So Glasgow will be a homecoming for the, for the band because we'll see our family and friends, but from an audience point of view, it will just be another gig. Now, what, when you finish this tour, what do you do then? Because you've got a couple of months off. I mean, what, what will you do during Christmas and the New Year? I'll probably go touring again. Probably, <laughs> you know, probably jump in an aeroplane somewhere and go, go, some, go to one of the places that are, that are particularly liked on the tour. I really liked uh, certain parts of uh, Asia. And I'd like to go back there and spend some time there. You played South Africa, didn't you? That must have been quite a delight for you. South Africa? Yeah, that was a real eye-opener for us because, uh, obviously, uh, it's... Well, it's relatively quite cool to go there now, so it was nice for us to go there and visit uh, cities like Cape Town, which I've, I've, I've always wanted to go and visit. It was absolutely stunning. Great Art Deco buildings. Yeah. And when you get back, I mean, when you get back from your holidays, lying on the beach, whatever you do, what do you do then next year? OK, um, basically January, February, we will recharge the batteries um, and then it's back in the studio. Wait, 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 I've basically two animals. We, we, do, we do the live shows, but there's also the, the recording side of it. So we'll disappear for six, seven months and basically write new songs, record them, mm. and get them ready to bring them back out to a place like Wembley, like, like we are tonight. I mean, do you actually have a chance to write stuff when you're on tour? Is it literally just hotel gig, hotel gig? Uh, wait, wait, don't really get inspired by, by travelling around. We usually find that we work best under pressure. Lock is in a room, uh, a studio, and say you've got two months to do finish this album, and that's what, that's what makes us work. If you say to wait away, you've got two years to do this next album. Two years later, we'll have it finished. Give us three months or two months and we'll have it finished in the same amount of time. So we don't, we don't actually write on the road. We'll, we'll find we'll go in totally blank, have a, a fresh piece of paper and start from scratch with the basic one or two one or two chords and see where it goes. Now you've got four top ten hits this year. Do you think you can repeat that again next year? Hopefully, hopefully. As long as we continue to make good quality pop music, then I think there'll always be a place in the market square for wet, wet, wet. The haircuts, the dance routines. The dance routines, yes, yeah. not forgetting that, yes. And the, and the tight trousers. Tight trousers. The tight trousers. Nothing to the imagination. I mean, you, you can see everything. You'll never get fit up with it all. No, I don't think so. We don't, as you can see, we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we take our music very seriously. OK, gentlemen, thank you very much. I hope no, you don't have the technical problems we had tonight. This is why I'm holding this very tiny little microphone. Back to you in the studio, Karen. Thank you, Ken. Now it's Rich.